Hello again and welcome to I've Got a Beatles podcast with Dave and Chris and we are going back into the lab for one of our favorite patented songs under the microscope to look at some John Lennon. It's time to go back to 1980 for John Lennon's song Watching the Wheels from Double Fantasy and Mm -hmm. this was actually a posthumous uh, release Mm -hmm. so it was released after John was killed and was the third single off the album backed with yes i'm your angel it reached number 10 on the billboard hot 100 and yeah what's with that why i don't get why it only installed out at number 10 Uh, i know i know it's kind of unusual maybe it was march 1981 was when it was released but i I don't know and then number seven on cash box and peaked at number 30 in the uk so not as popular uh, as the other two but another strange thing like what on yeah. earth peaked at number 30 right right no. in the uk it makes no sense no <laughs> so i don't know but we we picked this song because it's been a favorite of ours it was one of my favorite lennon tunes did you say that this is your favorite lennon tune or it's i mean it's hard to say that state that kind of thing yeah definitively and never move off of it to any other track correct correct but i believe you did say that to me at one point yeah it's for solo songs it's one i keep coming back to and it's always in my top three probably of lennon mm-hmm. all-time tracks and and it was revealing i know we're going to talk about this a little bit when we heard the acoustic version and the stripped mm-hmm. down version and yeah and then the ultimate mix came out <laughs> right. and we got all kinds right. of versions yeah uh, but it's there's a certain do you like the album version that has 30 seconds of absolute nonsense at the at the end of it some chatter and some some chatter (laughs) horse sound effects and stuff Uh, that one you know we talk about how we don't like the edits sometimes but that one is okay to have (laughs) have the edit up (laughs) yeah i like initially i was like what is different about these i I hadn't i was like oh i didn't even realize it was like a longer version so i put them on side by side and i was like oh i guess it's exactly the same song and and it goes on for 30 seconds longer and then it was just all this nonsense yeah <laughs> so it's a great song and i think it to, to me it gets better with age because it is kind of you can read it in a way where we'll talk about the lyrics of course but we'll you know you can read it sort of as about aging as well as what john was up to because i think that's mainly what most people thought when it came out because they hadn't heard much from john from 1975 until the release of uh, double fantasy so kind of what he was thinking and what he was doing and yeah i mean that's good good enough place to start just with that because it gives the impression of someone whose life had come into balance right um and the lyrics you know are all these different people complaining you know you're not doing the right thing and him very confidently being like, you know what, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so in that way, I believe why it's an aspirational song. Oh, I like that. It's, a, it's a sort of something that we are all kind of like trying to, you know, otherwise meditation apps wouldn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that kind of thing. So I think that's a, something we're all seeking and, yeah. and failing at. Yeah, or at least I'm speaking for myself here. Uh, no, no, very true. And I think yeah. John had some uh, trouble or some different ideas about the song. I, I was looking at one site and it mentioned that the original working title was Emotional Wreck. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. He started yeah. this in 1977 and then he changed it in 1978 to People, which I'm glad he changed that because there's already another much more famous song called People. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. 1979, he called it "I'm Crazy," <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually great titles, great, great titles. titles, aren't they? And then by ni- August 1980, when he recorded it in August and September, then he changed the title to "Watching the Wheels." So yeah, yeah, you can see. So it went through a bunch of things, and I we didn't know it at the time, and we knew we know it much more now because books have been written about it. But John wasn't exactly just sitting at home doing nothing for five years. Yeah. It, even though his public appearance was worse, worse, there weren't many, but he was writing a lot of songs. He was traveling. He was pretty active, just not in the public eye. So in a way, it's kind of like, I like what you said. And he's like, yeah, I'm good. You know, I, I've been, been actually doing a lot of the stuff that you're saying I'm not doing, but yeah. 
just doing it my way. Yeah. And then the other thing you think about, I mean, just automatically is the Beatlemania and oh, the, yeah. the craziness of that and how it was so just they were just on a roller coaster for years and years and years. And then John probably more so than anybody else just kept going kind of like yeah. recorded two albums in the first two years and, you know, doing all kinds of protesting and this and that and the other. So I just had to let it go. I think is yeah, a, yeah. you know, a statement of like, I had to stop that for a while and find some calm in my life. What do you think of the whole image of watching the wheels? What read one report that said, well, he just liked to look out the window at the Dakota and watch the cars go by and on yeah. 72nd street and just watching, thinking of the wheels that are always spinning. There are a lot of wheel songs in rock music, you know, the wheel in the sky keeps on turning and all yeah. sorts of makes wheels. me think of people have many different versions of that like bird watching or mm, yeah. train spotting, you know, yeah. things like that. So I, I, I do like that idea. Yeah. And I think that the lyrics at least are, are structured really well too. the, the, two verses and then a chorus mm -hmm. uh the verses the rhyme scheme is good the doing and ruin and then the strange game kind of rhyme scheme there yeah. and that first thing or the, it becomes the shadows on the wall you're no longer on the ball mm -hmm. but it's always the same thing these guys are trying to say these things <laughs> and i'm saying this back to you yeah, he's saying when I, you know, people yeah. asking questions, where's John? What's he up to? And then I tell him, there's yeah. no problem, only solutions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just sitting here doing time. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Loving, loving life and got my new kid and, you know, writing some songs in the Bahamas and in Japan yeah. and just enjoying life. I also was thinking about the lyrics and thinking like, there's uh, several reggae covers of this. Ah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, that kind of fits that reggae vibe of like the don't worry, be happy <laughs> type <laughs> vibe of sort of like everything's cool. I'm just relaxing. True. Chilling out. I'm on vacation, basically. A long permanent vacation, maybe, as he writes this, not knowing when it would end. So I, I was like, oh, that's interesting, like that the lyrics kind of would fit with reggae if if the reggae was done properly yeah, but well, that's uh, true. we'll get to that <laughs> we'll get to that well then there's also the idea that you know, i think this was in the playboy interviews where he he talks you know that was right when this album was coming out or right around that time when they were recording and he talks about how he he's kind of commenting on some of these people like paul or mick jagger or people who just keep grinding out album after album and they don't seem to take any time off because you know paul was obviously very active during yeah. those five years with wings over america and then the, yeah yeah all that stuff going on and the stones were really active so is does john have you think it's like a he's coming at front coming at it from a you know moral superiority sort of thing like <laughs> well look at me you know i'm it doesn't sound like him no <laughs> most humble guy in the world I mean. <laughs> or is it more just you know you do your thing i'm gonna do mine and you know this is how it's turned out i don't know yeah it's hard it's hard to say but yeah. um it's better i think if we listen to it to thinking the second thing like yeah that it's like he's like oh yeah do what you want but i'm, yeah. I'm good to go yeah so. exactly exactly so well, should we get into the music a bit? Or there's one thing I uh, really noticed in listening to this, and and we'll also get into the after we talk about the music, just generally the different versions. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, but what surprised me in the listen is how absolute masterful the mixing is on mm. this, with so many things. When you go and you actually look at the personnel. And you realize there's two lead guitars, uh, yeah, <laughs> three different lot. keyboards on it, a, a Rhodes, a Prophet Five, a Hammer Dulcimer, mm -hmm. but percussion, percussion, all vocals. that. But when you really think of the song, you're just thinking of what stands out: his voice and the piano a little bit. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, so the balance is perfect. Yes, all of these things, and to to contrast that, late in the episode, I'll tell you about another tune which I want you to go listen to, 
and what you'll hear is absolute trash <laughs> mixing at least where the vocals are crazy high the other things are too low you know they it's all muddied up it doesn't mm. sound like is there drums is there not drums this it's just all mixed really really blended very well Yes, because it's true. If you look at the personnel, which you just mentioned, there are a lot of instruments. And to me, what stands out and what always has stood out, I remember the first time I, maybe not the first time I heard it because I was pretty young, but more and more of that hammered dulcimer really uh-huh. stands out. And the, the story with that is pretty funny, how Jack Douglas, the co-producer of the album, heard this guy, Matthew Cunningham, playing dulcimer out on the streets of New York and invited him in to play on the song. So it's kind of cool. It gives us kind of kind of tremolo yeah. uh, thing in the chorus that really sticks out. But there's yeah. a lot going on. Musically, uh, this really hit me. And I don't know, I'm, I'm sure someone else has noticed this. But does this song sound like something else? Another famous John song? In fact, it's the hmm. same first two chords. Almost the same tempo, too. What are you getting at? Imagine there's no oh. heaven. I put it together. And I was singing Imagine over mm-hmm. people asking questions, mm-hmm. lost in confusion. Mm-hmm. And Imagine and Watching the Wheels seem to have some similarities. Same first two chords, same key, uh, mm-hmm. some similar types of things in there. And John Piano Songs, which really stands out. It's John's unique style of playing piano. But like you said, what I like about the the song, it's pretty simple uh, in a lot of ways. For very Yeah basic chords but i think the form is interesting because you've got those two verses then you have the pre-chorus kind of the when you say the looking fine on the wall before the actual chorus gets in there uh, yeah. you've got a, the verses the pre-chorus and the chorus and it then that chorus hangs on the the lyrics no longer riding on the merry-go-round with the dulcimer yeah so to me there's a lot of tension like it's sort of it keeps it interesting a lot of drama in this song yeah i also like that part where da, 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 da. yes it's like yes. a little with the i just had to let it go yeah yeah and then the keyboard that sounds sort of like a french horn yeah i think it's really nice and well like i said well it's not too much not too little often 80s keyboards that try to sound like horns are terrible yeah but uh this this sounded very good yeah i thought yeah it's really well scored i think yeah and john's voice sounds great it's got a good mixture of kind of the res- resignation of this is just how it is and this is who i am and i'm who i am but it also has the passion when he's, he gets building up to the no longer riding on the merry-go-round and you get that falsetto in there too it's got yeah. that the, the old lennon tricks in his voice so yeah i remember a friend of mine said once he thought that lennon's voice sounded younger the older he got which i think is kind of interesting i don't know if you agree with that hmm. like he sounded older when he was younger and he sounds younger when he's singing a song like this yeah well maybe it's the spirit like he, definitely in this last album his spirits seem to be as high as they'd ever been. Yes. Uh, compared to help me if you can, <laughs> I'm feeling down. Era, yeah, or you know? plastic Ono band. So, or, uh, so maybe it's that uh, partially that. Like, I feel like in many ways a lot younger, though, uh, in that I'm a little more at peace than I yeah. was in my youth. You're yeah. kind of quoting the, uh, Bob Dylan line, I was much older than I'm younger than that. Now, yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Thing. Yeah. So we got a different versions here. Of course, you yes. got the album version. That's that four minute one with the 30 seconds of silliness. <laughs> the horse noises. And you got the single edit. Then we got, I, I, if you remember, there was a re release that had a whole stripped down second disc, which was. <laughs> The whole album, but without some of the tricks and silliness of some of the production on the album, uh, at least to give you an alternate version. As you know me, Dave, I love the alternate versions. Yeah. Let's let's hear these all day long. What do you think of the stripped down version? though? Well, I remember when we, we this, this came out shortly after we had 
started the podcast, I think. Yeah. And we we were pretty favorable towards it. And yeah, when I list when I was listening this week to all the different versions, I, I still like that one the best, I'd say. I yeah. still liked the stripped down version. I think the the ultimate mix doesn't add too much to me. And the original was fine, but I, I do like the stripped down version. I like the ultimate mix. It's fine. It's yeah. good. Yeah. You know, uh the stripped down version though, I I really, really like. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's I think it's very cool. I'm wondering if if this gets re-released because I believe that was kind of C D era. I'm yes, not sure it if it I'm not sure if that stripped down version ever made a vinyl record. Mm. So I'm wondering if that makes a vinyl record in a in a bigger box set. We also, because thanks to the soundtrack to Funny People. Now, Funny People is an Adam Sandler movie that's an actual pretty good movie. Oh, I think it's not as the typical Adam Sandler, you know, donkey Oof. poop <laughs> jokes, but more of a serious movie about funny people, about comedians. Mm. Um, and this soundtrack is a, a, a just a delight for Beatles fans, as it also has Paul's Great Day. Oh, it. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And as photograph from mm. Ringo and George. So all of the Beatles are mm. on this uh, soundtrack to funny people, including the final song on the soundtrack is the acoustic version. Yes. Of this uh, song. So basically a demo, for lack of a better term. Um, and it's pretty good. I, I, yeah. I enjoyed it very much. It's sort of more of a guitar strumming with yeah. singing uh virgin what did you think of it i liked it too it's fun to hear songs that later became piano songs where they started on guitar like uh, god was another one you hear yeah. i think it was on the plastic ono set you can hear a guitar version of god yeah and it became piano uh this one i think it works pretty well on guitar and john's pretty spirited it's kind of a you know the sound quality is not amazing but enough and he is still working out the lyrics and working out the form but it's it's catchy and it's pretty complete yeah i think he says making the wheels go around making around. the wheels go around yeah, uh, yeah, yeah which makes no sense but uh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> guess what all there's no live version obviously but yeah. all of the best versions of this song are john lennon singing them. yes and they're all <laughs> each of them have something different to recommend they're worth yeah. hearing yeah so my highest recommendation is that you just dig into all of them yeah, and listen to all of them, partially because when we get to the cover versions here, boy, there's lots of weird stuff here, man. Yeah. The top cover version is probably Aloe Black from the Imagine John Lennon 75 concert. Aloe Black is a good singer, just him with a piano, kept it simple. Featured his voice. He really, he really gave you something in the song. Fantastic. Thumbs up. Now, that's the only one that kept it simple. Usually I'm complaining that these uh cover versions do it too on the nose. Yeah. And they yeah. don't change anything. Well, maybe I need to rethink that because <laughs> these other ones are really weird. <laughs> and can we say there's like i texted you earlier in the week i was amazed at how many covers of the song there are there are and by a huge amount of the, groups and there are but there there are none i could find until 2000 like That's so there's a huge gap between eight, 1980 and 2000 where nobody's touching this thing you're right yeah. which i don't understand that at all let me give you some talk about some of these chris cornell yeah okay. that was the one i heard first okay this is more of an upbeat take on this now this was a posthumous release so i won't complain too much about it because it's uh, yeah. perhaps chris cornell never wanted this version to come out he was the lead singer of Soundgarden. Lead singer of Soundgarden. We've talked about him in other, I think on our uh, song album career, uh, we talked about him. Yeah. They really overdo the uh, production on this. It's, it's, <laughs> it sounds like a car commercial or something. It's really <laughs> obnoxious, very bad. Yeah. And it's not Chris Cornell's best singing either. So uh, not, not very good. <laughs> so there's that one. Menace Yahoo. <laughs> this is a reggae singer. Okay. Yeah. Now I've heard good work from Menace Yahoo before. Youth is a song of his that I think is a mm. good song. And this was on a Darfur charity album. 
Okay. So I give it credit, credit for that. Yeah. And this is reggae. Okay. But no, this is overproduced <laughs> again. Not the reggae that I'm looking for. It's the reggae that's like way, way overproduced. And it's yeah. a, it's like kind of like a Ringo reggae. I was going to say some Ringo uh, reggae. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of bad reggae, though, what if UB40 was even lighter? That would be the sample. Oh yeah, the samples. I for, I remember about they're, they're, remember the samples. Remember their music is is described as reggae influenced pop rock. Yes. Yes. And a cross between check this out. A cross between the police and Grateful Dead. I don't get that at all. No, no, I don't hear that. <laughs> Maybe the worst parts of worst. the police and Grateful Dead. Dreadful, dreadful <laughs> cover there. <laughs> Billy Valentine, he's a jazz singer. Billy Valentine has done great other stuff, and there's kind of a peppy take mm. in this version. But it turned out so odd, it's almost like he's singing in a different key than the main song. Oh, I gotta this hear would, this. Oh, you've got to hear this one because this will drive you crazy. You'll be like, What is going on with this? Yeah, and then Willie Logan, a guitar instrumental, just your typical rock guitar, nothing special. And what I want to bring this up is because I listened to all the instrumental versions of this and yeah. it really did nothing for me. I, I, I guess it pointed out maybe that the melody of this song is somewhat simple and you really miss the lyrics. You're like, oh, yeah. I want the lyrics there. You know, sometimes I think that's true. Yeah. Sometimes these songs can exist without the lyrics and, and you're you're like, oh, the tune's nice. I don't think that's the case here. I think it's just, it's a little too straightforward, simple outside of the hands of John Lennon. That's a great point. I'm thinking, I'm just, as you're talking, I'm running through the melody in my head. Yeah. It's, there's not much to it. It's It's real tight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, other than that, Dave, you you did say there's a lot of them, and every single one I clicked on was just real amateur hour stuff. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I'm, I want to point out one, and this is not to diss the person, <laughs> but to point out something, and that's the Melissa Ungar. All right. I don't know who Melissa Ungar no. is, by the way. It's just got insane mixing on the track. It's like trying to <laughs> replicate the all of the instruments on the song, but they're all like really buried and then her voice is insanely pushed out it's like if i did this it just makes the song sound crazy so mixing and balance is very important and i think that's a main message yeah this podcast we were talking about uh about the why the song is like very impressive and very good yeah yeah <laughs> the single version the album version of it the ultimate mix all of that it's like thumbs way up because they get that balance right yeah definitely well as we know there's you always find some interesting <laughs> ones and uh, yeah, yeah I, I just maybe i because i typed on spotify i just typed in watching the wheels and just a ton of things came up yeah. and that i didn't did i listen to any of them no just the chris cornell one because curious yeah well sometimes the other thing that happens on spotify on youtube for sure amazon music which i have is you'll do that and what you realize is there's a lot of kids bop yeah, type things true. and lullabies <laughs> there's with the beatles covers for sure there's definitely your beatle cover bands right right which that's I almost true. dismiss yeah un un universally it's yeah. like yeah, i don't want to hear this so <laughs> yeah, i'm, I'm sure true. some of those are even better than the regular but they're it's just like yeah you're a cover band you're not yeah. like a your own artist or anything no and i think on spotify anybody can upload anything yeah yeah you so, could you could get the high school bands on there or the yeah the john lennon impersonators are on there yeah. and well anyway great song always good to to reconnect with this song and dig a little bit deeper into it so uh, always as chris just said we recommend all the the john versions of this it's hard to beat them yeah and and you might start with the acoustic version just to see where it started and then work your way up to the released or maybe the ultimate mix which is the most recent interpretation of it and see what yeah see what you think 
be sure to follow us in all of our usual places. And in the meantime, uh, thanks as always for listening. And we'll be back at you soon with a new episode.